Hello listeners, this is the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth and final quarter of 2022. The series is titled On Death, Dying and the Future Hope. The author is Dr Alberto Tim, while your readers are Percy and Sibylla Harold. Lesson 3 is ready for teaching on October 15. It's titled Understanding Human Nature and I'm Percy Harold. Tuesday, October 11. The Spirit Returns to God. Read Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and Ecclesiastes 12 verses 1 to 7. What contrast can you see between these two biblical passages? How can they help us to understand better the human condition in death? And also look at Genesis chapter 7, verse 22. Let's begin with Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And Ecclesiastes 12, beginning at verse 1, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, when the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down. When the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look through the windows grow dim. When the doors are shut in the streets, and the sound of grinding is low. When one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden, and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Remember your Creator before the living cord is loosed, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. And Genesis 7 and verse 22 all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the land, died. As already seen, the Bible teaches that the human being is a soul, as we read in Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the soul ceases to exist when the body dies. Ezekiel 18 verse 4, and that reads, Behold, all souls are mine, the soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine, the soul whose sins shall die. End verse 20. The soul whose sins shall die, the Son shall not bear the guilt of the Father, nor the Father bear the guilt of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. What about the spirit? Does it not remain conscious even after the death of the body? Many Christians believe so, and they even try to justify their views by quoting Ecclesiastes 12.7, which says, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. But this statement does not suggest that the spirit of the dead remains conscious in God's presence. Ecclesiastes 12, 1-7, in quite dramatic terms, describes the ageing process culminating with death. Verse 7 refers to death as the reversal of the creation process mentioned in Genesis 7. As already stated, on the sixth day of the creation week, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, it says in verse 7 of chapter 2, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. But now, Ecclesiastes 12.7 tells us that the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So the breath of life that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, and that he also has provided to all other human beings, returns to God, or, in other words, simply stops flowing into and through them. 
we should keep in mind that Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 describes the dying process of all human beings and does so without distinguishing between the righteous and the wicked. If the alleged spirits of all who die survive as conscious entities in the presence of God, then are the spirits of the wicked with God? This idea is not in harmony with the overall teaching of the scriptures. Because the same dying process happens both to human beings and to animals, death is nothing else than ceasing to exist as living beings. Ecclesiastes 3, 19 and 20 For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. One thing befalls them. As one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and all return to dust. As stated by the psalmist in Psalm 104, verse 29, You hide your face, they are troubled, you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. And so to finish the day, we often say that death is just part of life. Why is that so wrong? Death is the opposite of life, the enemy of life. What great hope then is found in this verse, 1 Corinthians 15:26? The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.